Hello, this video is aimed at students, teachers and parents looking for key information about OCR's Cambridge Advanced National in Computing qualification which begins in September 2025. Have a read of the video context box where I go through some housekeeping. To be clear, I'm not linked to OCR in any way. I've just used the publicly available specification to provide an overview of the course in an understandable way. If you look at the full title there, you can see why simplification may be helpful. One other thing, all information should be correct at the time of publishing this video, but as this is a new course, details may change, so I recommend keeping an eye on OCR's website. There are two types of certificates that can be earned in this qualification. A certificate, which is similar in nature to an AS level in that it's typically one year in length, and an extended certificate, which is similar in nature to an A level, generally being studied across two years. The certificate has 150 guided learning hours, that's teacher-led time to go through all of the content, and includes any assessment time too. The certificate covers two specific units, one being an exam and one being an NEA. NEA stands for Non-Examined Assessment and is commonly called coursework as there isn't an exam. More on units in the two types shortly. The extended certificate is what most schools or colleges will offer and has 360 guided learning hours and requires five units to be completed two mandatory exam units, one mandatory NEA unit, and two out of four optional NEA units too. Here are the seven different units available in this course. As you can see, there is a heavy focus on development, as all but one unit has that word in the unit title. This is to be clear that this qualification is computing and not an IT course like the previous Cambridge Technical course was. So you can expect to be coding, designing, and developing program prototypes. The certificate will see you complete the Fundamentals of Application Development Unit by sitting an exam, and also the Designing and Communicating User Experience slash User Interface Solutions NEA unit as well. The extended certificate requires you to complete both exam units, and many schools or colleges will often spread this out to one in each year. You will also have to do the User Experience slash User Interface unit, and then it gets interesting. There are four more NEA units that you can use, Game development, website development, immersive technology solution development, which is things like virtual reality, and software development. As part of the extended certificate, you must do two of these units. Which two is ultimately the teacher's decision based on the group and their skills and interests. Let's look a bit closer at how the two exam units work. Fundamentals of application development is mandatory for both certificate types, and developing application software is also required for the extended certificate. Both units have similar guided learning hours and the exams will work the same way. They are an hour and 15 minutes with 60 marks and a range of question types, mostly questions for one to five marks, but also a single six mark question and a single nine mark question that require an extended response. The exam is written on paper as standard unless you have approved access arrangements and there's an exam window in both January and June of each year. Page 13 of the specification says that students can resit an exam unit twice before completing the qualification. Now let's look at the NEA units. As mentioned, the user experience slash user interface unit is mandatory for both certificate types, with two out of the four remaining NEA units needed in the extended certificate. Each unit has 70 guided learning hours, except for the compulsory F162, which has 75 hours. The NEA task is made available to teachers in June, but can't be started for a new cohort until that September, when it's live for two years. 15 of the 70 or 75 guided learning hours will be completing the coursework task under supervised conditions in school. It cannot be done at home, and you are supervised, most likely by your teacher, to ensure that your work is your own. At the end, it is assessed by your teacher and then moderated by OCR. Each task within the assignment is categorized into pass, merit, or distinction and this course uses a new compensatory approach rather than a hurdles approach, which we'll look at next. An NEA assignment can be improved and resubmitted once, and this must be done in the next assessment window, such as originally submitting in January and then resubmitting in June. Each NEA unit is split into 24 tasks, broken down into 12 past tasks, 7 merit tasks, and 5 distinction tasks. The difference between these are usually to do with complexity. For example, past task 1 in unit F162 uses the keyword describe. Merit task 1 is to explain, and distinction task 1 is to create. Although it's not always that simple, and every task should be given careful thought and time to meet the criteria. To explain how these units work, let's look at an example. Say a student met the criteria for 11 past tasks, 6 merit tasks, and 2 distinction tasks, 
In the old hurdles approach, they would have failed this unit because you previously needed to have completed all pass tasks to achieve a pass, all pass and all merit tasks for a merit, and all pass, all merit, and all distinction tasks for a distinction grade. However, the new system treats each task, regardless of its category, as a single point, so to speak. So you need 10 points, or to have met all the criteria on 10 tasks, to earn a pass. 15 fully met tasks will get you a merit, and 20 out of the 24 tasks fully complete will award a distinction. So with this example of 18 completed tasks, what would have been a fail in the old system is now more fairly awarded a merit grade. Another benefit of a new system is that every mark counts. So even if you only got nine tasks for a certain unit complete, these will be converted into UMS on the uniform mark scale, which we'll look at later, which contribute to the overall qualification. So there's no wasted effort and you don't necessarily need to pass every unit to earn a pass grade overall. There are a number of skills you will build on and strengthen as part of this course, especially being creative and working independently. When the NEA units go live and you have 15 hours to complete the tasks, you have minimal teacher support, so it's vital you are well prepared and can manage your time efficiently. A general interest in computing is helpful, as is an enthusiasm for problem solving and not giving up when things get challenging. There are several subjects that the exam board recommend would complement this course with similar skills such as design and technology, media studies, maths, business and art. And if you're thinking further ahead to higher education, such as university courses, then the extended certificate gives you plenty of experience developing prototypes and background knowledge which would help in courses such as computer science and building on the NEA units such as development for websites, user experience, software or video games. Let's look at how your overall qualification grade would be worked out. There are 300 marks in total in the extended certificate. The two exam units have 60 marks and one mark is one on the UMS, which stands for Uniform Mark Scale. Uniform marks are used because the NEA units are out of 24. Remember, there are 24 tasks that you can complete. But the exams are out of 60 and they need to be equally weighted so that every unit is out of 60. There is a calculator on OCR's website to help teachers do this. So, all of the five units have an individual grade, being 48 uniform marks for a distinction, 36 uniform marks for a merit, and 24 uniform marks for a pass. Then, the uniform marks for each unit are added together to give an overall grade, from distinction star, which is 270 or more out of 300, down to pass, which is 120, to 179 out of 300. Any marks lower than 120 would be unclassified and a fail. Now let's look at UCAS points. So the UCAS tariff is a way of comparing qualifications and is used by some universities or colleges when setting entry requirements or giving offers. It's important to note that this is just a guide and you can see the quote from UCAS there that says not all universities and colleges use the tariff when making offers, many use qualifications and grades instead. In terms of UCAS points, a distinction star, which is the highest grade on this course, is 56 points, just like an A star in an A-level course like computer science or history. A distinction has 48 points, just like a grade A, a merit is equivalent to C, and a pass is equivalent to an E for an A-level. Finally, let's talk about resources. The best place to get more information about this course is OCR's website. The page for this qualification is linked in the video description. You'll be able to find more resources on there over time, such as previous exam papers, to help prepare for assessments. OCR have announced that they're working on a textbook for this course as well, which many people will find helpful. And finally, a Google or YouTube search can help you find more resources. But remember, this is a new course, so support for it should grow over time. You can find information on this YouTube channel right here and the CS Noobs website. Check the descriptions for the latest playlists. So that was all the key information for the new OCR Cambridge Advanced National and Computing Application Development course. A final reminder that I'm not linked with OCR, but I've done my best to provide an overview as accurately as possible and correct as far as I can find to when this video was uploaded. Please check the video description for any updates and keep an eye on OCR's website. And thank you for watching.